Alright, YouTubers, what's up? Um, it's been a while. I'm just gonna make another video, and this is, uh, I'm just making this video just to show, you know, people out there that might be curious or might not know how to, uh, overclock the i7 uh, 3820 for the Intel 2011 platform or the x79 platform. And, um, I'm just going to give you a walkthrough of how to overclock it, show you the settings, what I've used. And keep in mind, guys, that the settings for me might be different for you. So I'll say experiment with it. Um, but let's, get, let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm just going to restart my computer. All right. All right. So, um, I sh this is the typical Ad Asrock BIOS for um, their X79 platform boards. So it doesn't matter which board, which board you get. Um, if it's X79, it's going to look similar to this or like this. Um, first thing you want to do is that because the i7 3820 is partially locked your maximum multiplier is 44 so that will be your maximum you can't go any further than that so for example if I try to type in 45 and press enter this is what happened it, it turned it back to 44 so um, your maximum multiplier is 44 so you can technically go in the BIOS and just change it to 44 and you have 4.4 gigahertz um, I'm sure you can run that at stock speed without increasing multiplier, but if you're unstable, I would just up the voltage just a bit to stabilize it. Not even a lot, just like, you know, 0.5 volt just to stabilize it. Um, okay, so how I'm running at, currently running at 4.6 gigahertz, or a little bit over, like 4.26 or something like gigahertz. So, um, how I get there is I simply just put it back at 37 where I had it um, I put the current limit to 300 I think it should be automatic but if it's not make sure you just put the current limit to 300 um, most people use one this is the 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 host clock override or the bus speed um, I'm sure you guys know what the bus speed is It's between the RAM it's like data between the RAM the CPU and and keep in mind once you overclock the bus speed you practically overclocking the RAM as well so I would say be careful um, most people have it at 125 if you set it at 125 and type in 40 like so that's pretty much 5 gigahertz okay that's so easy it is to overclock this processor um, you, you put it at 4.1 it's probably gonna go to 4 point you know over 5.1 uh, 5 gigahertz or so but that's pretty much 5 gigahertz right here. 40 over 1.25 on the bus. Alright. 37 over 1.25.2 on the bus is equal to 4.6 gigahertz. A little bit over 4.6 gigahertz. Now, um, once I set that, um, keep in mind that my RAM, the type of RAM I bought is the Wintex 1. And the reason why I love this RAM is that um, even though it's 1600 RAM, it could be overclocked to 2 mega, um, 2000 megahertz, which, which is pretty awesome for RAM. Even though it's running a little bit loose timings, it's not bad of a timing. As you can see, um, it's running at a 11.11.29 plus T1. So it's not bad. And there's actually an increase in speed running at that speed and timing so that's pretty nice now um, you go here to the voltage control now I set this to automatic um, you can put whatever level and it's it's a CPU low line cal um, calibration so I get um, when you, whatever level you put it at that's the level is going to keep the voltage range within so the high um the the higher you put the level 
the le uh, the more stable it keep the voltage. The less you put the level, the less stable it keep the voltage. So the voltage you see the voltage fluctuate here and there. I have it at level three. Um, I, I had it at automatic mode, but I'm not sure if I change it or not. But I have it at level three, as you can see right here. Um, I have my voltage at 1.4 V. Um, so I don't haven't changed anything. I left everything else on auto, as you can see. I left everything else on auto. All I did was just change the voltage and kept it on fixed. There's two modes. There's auto, which um, you can do that, as I said, if you want to run it at 4.4 gigahertz by just changing the, the, the partial lock multiplier then you can just leave the the, the vehicle voltage at auto but if you're going to overclock as far as I went then you need to put it on fixed mode and set the voltage manually now um, as you can see everything else is on auto um, VRM protection is enabled um, next thing you need to do as well is um, just like the regular Sandy Bridge processor this does have turbo boost so um, at stock it's going to turbo boost up to I think 3.9 gigahertz um, I suggest that if you're going to overclock this processor to turn it off so you go into the CPU configuration which is located right under advanced and then you click there and I, I disable uh, the the CPU boosting pretty much that's Intel uh, speed tech technology I leave everything over here on this side though enable that's like the you know like the visual uh, Intel visualization technology most of those things I leave on the hyper threading technology I leave on so pretty much most of those things I keep on but that's as you can see it shows you the frequency as well as you can see so, and as it tells you all the information partially unlocked and that's the frequency I'm currently running at. So after we go back to the CPU overclocking, where you can see Intel Speed Step, make sure you disable that if you want to run that uh, overclock like for 24/7, seven days a week. You know, what I mean, if you want to run it, just that straight overclock, disable it. If you don't want to run that overclock constantly, then you enable Intel Speed Step. And then when you're playing games, like if you're not uh, a demanding application, it will boost itself up to 4.6. And then when you stop playing, it will drop back down to 1.6 in like an idle state. But I disable it because I want to run my processor at 4.6 constantly. Since I'm using less voltage on it, it's not a big deal. Now, once you have done that, as I said, once you have put the 37 in, the 300, where the core limit goes, um, you set that to 125 or 125.2 if you want to follow my settings you can set that and that's the the host clock override and then you come down um, you go to voltage configuration you go up there and you set your voltage as you can see you can pick as, as much as you want the higher you go obviously the higher the voltage you're going to get but you don't need that much voltage actually I can even run it click on this and run it at that speed um, but you can experiment you can lower the voltage as you go so you can run at 1.4 volt when you load up at 4.6 and you and test it to see if it's stable if it is you can keep dropping drop, dropping it down in increments till you reach a low voltage but the processor is stable so you can do it that way as well but as I said you gotta tweak around with it a bit um, once you do that all you gotta do is Go across, go back, and just uh, let's go on um, save, save changes and exit. And that's all you gotta do, and your computer will restart and load back right up into Windows. Alright, so now 
we can go to CPU Z just to give you proof that I'm running at 4.6 alright there you go let me clear that up a bit focus there you go so that's what I'm running at 4.6 at 1.48 volts at this, at this voltage it's stable all day it doesn't crash on me I can play any game doesn't matter what I do it just runs at that speed stable all day and it's running cool right now my room is a little warm so the temperature might not be that great let me look at the temperature um, yeah as I said my room is a little warm so the temperature is not that great but whenever it cools off and it gets cold I idle about 35 degrees on all the cores sometimes even lower so yeah so it's pretty simple guys not very hard to overclock as you can see my memory is running at a little bit like 2001 megahertz pretty much that's what it is so and it's running in quad channel mode as you can see and that's 16 gigabyte of ram so it's not hard guys you know I hope you find this video informative and how to overclock it as I said you guys can go experiment a little you can push it a little bit if you want to just make sure even though you're pushing it add increments of voltage because these processors run hot they're 130 watts processor and you need you know good cooling I wouldn't recommend a heat sink if you're going past if you're going past 4.6 I, I would recommend pretty much water cooling but if you're on a heat sink you can go all the way up to 4.6 and you'll be fine but anything past that I recommend you get water cooling man because these things as I said 130 watt processor they do run hot however they do perform great in games so um that's just um that's just my little video I hope you guys find it helpful and I'll keep making videos I have a little project coming I still haven't finished my case yet um from the last time I posted it up I have some improvements I want to make to it so I probably this time turn around make a video like a little bit log something like that and show you guys what I'm doing um, I'm gonna have to have my girlfriend hold the camera for me me while I show you guys what I'm doing but um, I'm gonna keep the videos coming next year tax time that's when everything's it's gonna really pop off um, I'm going to buy a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, new video cards, <coughs> new this, new that. So just, you know, subscribe, keep to my channel. If you have any questions out there, you know, if you want me to do a video to show you something, request it. I'll definitely find the time and do it for you guys. You know, as I said, I love helping people. I love showing people my creativity. Um, you know, just ask any question. I'll help you guys out. I hope you find this informative and helpful. And subscribe and have a nice day. Until next time. J Prince out.